the Fedoric Centre was set up by the Saskatchewan government to develop the capacity in the province to support a nuclear industry should the province decide to go nuclear. And that if we were to successfully uh, be home to a, a small modular reactor organisation, we needed to understand what the people think. And this provided us an opportunity to really investigate how we deal with big science questions in a successful way in a discussion with the population. CSIP, in its first instance, is, is a place where we intend to examine deeply the theories, the methods, and the evidence that supports decision making around science and technology. In many cases, uh, people think that the problem with uh, new technologies, uh, new processes, is simply that people have to be convinced about the benefits that will be delivered. Uh, but in fact, the larger question of how we move from uh, innovation to uh, the product uh, in a way that satisfies public demands uh, and uh, supports an economy, that larger picture is not being uh, uh, addressed and will certainly be addressed by CSIP. Classic tools opinion polling. So throw out the question, you know, what do you think of XYZ? And the citizen responds this or that or the other thing, but the, we're not accountable to those answers. So this is a very different approach because what we're suggesting is we're not just asking citizens the questions, we're allowing citizens, we want citizens to ask questions. We want citizens to engage in a dialogue where they're learning, where we know the public is smart. We know that the people on the street do have an opinion and it's often an informed opinion. And this kind of classic idea of a deficit model where what we're going to do is we're going to educate the citizens, we're going to push this information at them and then they'll just understand it'll all be fine is, is really not feasible because these are value-laden questions. CSIP provides a tremendous opportunity to actually talk directly with the populations of previously non-nuclear jurisdictions to find out what it is that worries them about the technology, what it is that excites them about the technology, so that we can communicate with them about the things that are important to them rather than those things that are important to us. Engineering existed before science. The pyramids were built before science. And building a, a structure like that requires public buy-in, public involvement, public understanding, public participation. So the, the goal of this initiative was to provide that understanding uh, of the public needs, concerns, uh, aspirations and try to frame nuclear technology within the framework of, 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 of the environment, of society, economics, all angles uh, of a sustainable energy source. But nuclear technology exists everywhere in our modern lives. Smoke detectors in our houses that are um, saving lives every day uh, use a byproduct of the nuclear industry. Nuclear medicine sees hundreds of thousands of people treated every day. If you haven't yourself been treated uh, with nuclear medicine, someone in your immediate family has been. And I think as people understand this, they get, get more comfortable uh, with the issues surrounding nuclear and understand the upsides. I hope that we start to inform conversation. I hope that we expand democratic engagement and really provide the kind of advice, the fact-based advice, not just necessarily scientific, but fact-based advice or evidence-informed advice that, that helps decision makers um, at the end of the day, you know, respond to citizens, respect what citizens are saying, respond to citizens, but also I hope we are able to, to get involved in some of the social learning that will occur because citizens will, in my opinion, be be encouraged to, to join this learning process. It has to be you know, very much a co-production model in which we're all in it together, because we really are all in it together. And I think that a lot of the meltdown around the climate change talks that we haven't actually been able to, to have those conversations is that we haven't necessarily spent enough time as a community listening to one another. What excites me about CSIP uh, is quite simply uh, that uh, the, the, here's an opportunity to make a difference. Um, 
As an academic, of course, I hope I make a difference every day with the students that I teach and supervise. Uh, but to make a difference in terms of improving lives, uh, improving the Canadian economy, uh, that's very exciting.